I recently saw M. Night Shyamalan's promotional video for his daughter called Trap. And, um, how do I put it lightly? Trap is crap. But I already said that much in my regular review. If you haven't watched that, feel free to. But this is going to be a spoiler video. I'm going to be ruining this movie from front to back. Not that it really needs help being ruined. So come on, let's go. Join me. We're going to have a great time. Let's begin. Trap has an intro. Oh, oh my god, Lady Raven herself is here. Lady Raven, played by M. Knight's daughter. Oh my god, hello, hi, I'm a huge fan of yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. She said you should subscribe to the channel. I agree. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Raven. Josh Hartnett plays Cooper. He's taking his daughter, Riley, to the concert of the century. Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, that sort of thing. That's what Lady Raven is. She encompasses all of that splendor and more. As an unapologetic fan of crappy female pop music, I found her stuff to be pretty good. Pretty decent. Salika Shyamalan put in the work to make this music, and her dad gave her the platform to showcase it. So, you know, listen to it on Spotify or whatever you have to do. Uh, maybe do that instead of watch this film. Let me see if I can wrap my uh, dick around this. Okay, so Cooper, played by Josh Hartnett, he takes his daughter to this concert. Because he's a good guy, he's a good dad. And he just wants to have some fun with his kid. Oh yeah, and he also has a dude locked up in a random house basement. So that's a thing that's happening as well. So he's going to check in on him periodically. Just be like, hey, how you doing? I'm at the concert. Be happy for me. What are you doing, dad? Nothing. Shut up. Raven's on. Watch, watch Lady Raven. It's great. Yay, Lady Raven. Unbeknownst to him, upon walking into this arena that seats 20,000 people, cops are swarming this place because they know they have been tipped off that the killer is going to be here as well. You see, folks, Cooper's been busy. He's been a busy little beaver. He's not a good guy. He has murdered 12 people, chopped up the body parts, and left them out for people to see. But he always manages to slip away. Because he's very meticulous, he's got OCD, yeah, you know me. So they're at the concert, and it has become painfully obvious that the FBI has sprung this whole thing as a trap. They use this as the perfect setting to catch this guy. What? The premise on its face is pretty ridiculous, especially when we find out later they're not actually sure what he looks like. They have several different tips and several different types of people, ranging from middle-aged white guy to black dude to person with gray hair. It's all across the board. They get to the concert and it's become painfully obvious to me at this point that there is going to be a lot of music. It's like La La Land without the magic, charm, fun, or execution. Instead, it's just listening to some generic pop shit for quite a while. I'm talking a good chunk of this movie is just a concert. It's like I took my daughter to the Taylor Swift theatrical release of her Eras tour again. But this time I know none of the music, so I can't even nod my head along. For the first full half of this movie, it's really just Josh Hartnett coming up with excuses to leave his daughter's side so he can kind of get information from random passerbys. And the stuff they give him, the friendliness, the way they engage in this movie is fucking absurd. At one point, he takes his daughter to get some merch. They go to a t-shirt table. There's one more small t-shirt left, but another girl next to her also wants it. And she's kind of a brat about it. She's like, nah, I wanted that shirt too. I was here before you. Even though the daughter specifically spoke out, was asked first what she wanted. Anyway, the dad, Cooper, doesn't want to draw attention to himself. So he's like, yeah, yeah, let her have it. It's fine. The guy working the merch booth is so taken aback. So captured. So in awe by what a gentleman, what a scholar this dad is. He turns to him and says, wow, there's not a lot of... Not a lot of good family guys like you anymore, sir. He just waved away his shirt. This guy acts like he cured cancer, and he says, I'm gonna hold this shirt aside for you. Come back in 10 minutes. Later on in the film, Cooper goes back to him. The guy doesn't have the shirts up there yet because they're still off in the back room or something. He goes, hey, why don't you come with me? We, we, we don't know each other at all, but why don't you come to the back room with me in the access only available to employees and let's get that t-shirt. He even lets Cooper grab the box down from the high shelf. What the fuck? And Cooper and him the whole time are talking about the security here and how they have it all beefed up to catch Cooper. I just, listen, 
These places are so locked down to begin with at concerts. If anybody would have saw this employee take a random stranger into the back, he would have been fired. But the fact that it's all elevated because there's a serial killer around makes it even more absurd. And that's not the only instance. Another time, Cooper, who uses two diversional tactics in this film. At one point, he pushes a, a woman down some stairs. And at another point, he burns a woman's face with the friars. This movie's got to be like PG, by the way. There is nothing graphic in this. There's nothing exciting going on. Those two instances are really the biggest wow moments of the film. Okay, so he burns the woman. He goes upstairs onto the rooftop. And he's got an apron on to look like he works there. The SWAT up top are like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing up here, dude? And he's like, I'm a worker. And so he shows his card and badge. And they're like, okay, just go back downstairs. As he turns to leave, he stops and goes, oh, by the way, who's running this operation? What's her deal? And the SWAT guy's like, oh, I'm glad you asked. Great question. Let me tell you all about her. What? These people shouldn't have jobs anymore. This should all be secure, confidential information. You know what this movie reminded me of? If you've seen Wayne's World, there's a scene later on where they're trying to find Mr. Big, and they run into the security guard outside who's played by Chris Farley. Farley tells them all this information about where Mr. Big's heading, what car he drives, and all this stuff. And after this interaction, Wayne turns to Garth privately and says, wow, that was a lot of information for a security guard to have. So I'm, I'm uh, paraphrasing, but that was essentially what it boiled down to. And that's what I kept thinking throughout this movie. He runs into people they're like, oh yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. Let me tell you all about it. There's a subplot that goes virtually nowhere where the daughter has a beef with some friends. We don't, I don't think we ever get the full context of why they're even fighting. But Cooper keeps running into this mom. He runs into her two or three times. And these interactions, like every interaction in this movie, is so awkward. These are supposed to be funny moments, but the actress, the way the camera shot, the way that everything plays out is so bizarrely handled in M. Night fashion, it doesn't come off as funny, it's just uncomfortably awkward. During the later portion of the concert, Cooper realizes the only way he can get out of here is in the car with Lady Raven herself. So he makes a beeline about six rows back to M. Night Shyamalan, who's of course just hanging out in the back as he always is, and he tells him how much his daughter Riley loves Lady Raven, how she really helped her pull through her tough times with her terrible disease. She had like lupus or leukemia or something. I don't remember exactly what he, he gave her for a disease, which she didn't have. This is enough to convince M. Night's character, who is a relative of Lady Raven up on the stage, to get her up there. How convenient! So Riley is swept up there. She has this amazing dance with Lady Raven, a day she'll never forget, really. Uh, truly, because she'll also find out her dad's a murderer in a bit. And again, during this, there's another woman working there that says, Oh, hey, Cooper, yeah, you can just come back and hang out with the star of the show, and you can just do whatever, just go wherever you want. We understand that there's a crazed killer around, but we trust you based on the, the very little interaction we've had, and we're really not buttoning anything up at all. So yeah, come on into the back with everybody else. I want to point out that there is something earlier in this movie that pisses me off to no end because they don't utilize it. Script Writing 101. The foreshadow in this film that's not used is so annoying, I couldn't help but be bothered when the credits rolled. During the concert, Lady Raven is talking to the audience, and she says a catchphrase a couple times over. It's something like, I release you, I believe is what it is. After she goes on a monologue talking about the trauma in her life, and how she had people let her down, and she just released them. And it was this beautiful thing. And I fucking knew when I heard that, okay, this daughter is gonna, at some point at the end of the movie, say that to her dad. She's gonna say, I release you. She's either gonna kill him and say it, or he's gonna be taken away in custody, or she's gonna see him slowly die. In any case, she's gonna be able to use the catchphrase. She never uses the catchphrase! It never gets used! And they have the opportune time for it. They find the time to put her back at the end of the movie. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Now in the back hallways of this concert. The concert's over. Lady Raven's in her, in her dressing room. 
And Cooper manages to convince the cops, the FBI, whoever, that he needs alone time with her for a second to talk a little bit more privately about his daughter. And they're like, yeah, sure, stranger, why not? Even though we're on complete lockdown and we haven't found the killer yet, go on back with the star of this thing. Have some privacy. He shows her the phone of the dude that he has in the basement locked up. And he says if she doesn't play along, he's going to push a button on his app, which is going to release some chemical into the air, carbon dioxide or something, and it's going to kill him in like five minutes. He's like, what are you going to do? This is like a trolley problem. His life versus my life. What are you going to do? At that point, I would yell out, hey, the killer's in the room. Or I would walk out of the room and say, hey, he's the killer and hit his phone away. Or do literally anything else but what she does. Because for the next several minutes, she's going to make a series of stupid decisions, the likes of which are unbelievable, that are inconceivable by the human mind. She gets in the car with the dad and the daughter. Cooper says, drop us off in the corner. She throws a Hail Mary and says, why don't we go to your home? They're like, what you got going, Raven? What's cooking, girl? They pull up to the house. They get out of the car. The mom is there to greet them because Cooper's a family man. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a daughter. It's, it's all coming together. It's all coming up, Cooper. But that's so Raven gets out and she's like, hey, let's take a, let's take a photo. And I, it was so great to meet your daughter. This was great. And this is when you say bye. This is when everybody in the scenario says, okay, see you later. I have to go. You have the address of his house. You have his profile. You know his name. You know every fucking thing you need. You get in the limo. You say, go now. You call the cops. This is not difficult. But what does she do in her infinite wisdom? She says, why don't I come in the house? She wants to go in the house. What? Because in her stupid ass mind, she's going to somehow be able to save the guy in the basement? How? Question mark. And why does her leaving at that point even put him in jeopardy? Cooper never said she couldn't leave. Cooper actually wanted her to leave. And to that point, what the fuck was Cooper going to do if she did drop him off at the corner like he wanted her to? He's just going to leave with Riley like nothing happened? Like, oh, I got away with this scot-free. Do, 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 do. He's just going to like hold the phone backwards. Like, come on, bitch. What are you going to do? She goes inside. Mother Cooper has a nice spread of deviled eggs and other accoutrements. They eat, they talk, they laugh, they love. And she's about to leave. Cooper's like, hey, 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 leave. But she stays. She offers to play a song on the piano. Why? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. She somehow gets Cooper's phone, though, runs into the bathroom, and does a fucking live feed on TikTok or something, where she's like, hey guys, there's someone, there's someone in a basement by a, with a blue door and a statue, and if you, and everybody's like, oh yeah, I know where that place is. Mike's place? Mikey's place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm actually next door right now. I'll hop over there. She ends up saving the guy that's locked downstairs. What a treat. What an amazing turn of events. Meanwhile, Cooper's outside throwing a fit. The family's getting scared. He finally gets into the bathroom and gets his phone back. He's like, what did you do? I'm not happy with you. And then just a string of stupid happens. So it's even dumber than what we had already. Keep in mind, she was in a bathroom that had a window. She could have gone out the window. She could have thrown his phone in the toilet and destroyed it with water. Because technology does not like water. She could have thrown the phone. She could have left with the phone. There's... Every part of this is ridiculous. So she willingly goes with him into the car. They're in the garage. He opens the garage. The family's outside like, Papa, what, what, what's going on? Are you the butcher? He's the butcher. Are you the butcher, Papa? And it's at this point that Raven goes, I think it's about time to hit that dusty trail and slowly gets out of the car. Not quickly. Not quickly. You don't want to make any sudden movements. She's just like, mm. Leave, comes back. Oh, I, I forgot my chapstick. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Cooper, textbook narcissist with mother issues. He sees his mom at least once in the movie prior to this moment. At least one time he sees the mom show up as a ghost. But here we are. He's confronted with his demons. He's confronted with his two lives coming together. He locked them in the bedroom upstairs. They somehow used the fucking window to get down those crafty sons of bitches. He's now stuck between a family and a hard place. So what does he do? 
Lady Raven finally called the cops. They've shown up. They've surrounded the place. She's in the limo. Blows him a kiss goodbye. Everything's good, right? Wrong! Because of course he dug a hole from his home under the ground to the neighbor's home or something and he got into the fucking limo driver's seat. I don't know what happened to the limo driver. I don't think they ever addressed it. By the way, it's storming outside. It's pouring rain. Water's tattering against the window. Really coming down hard. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's really an atmosphere that I'm loving right now. He's now one-on-one -on -one with Ladybird again. They drive downtown where a mob of people are excited to see her. She's in dire straits though because she's in the car with the killer. What is she gonna do? Well, she breaks off the handlebar and slips out the door. Very easily, mind you. Very easily. Almost too easy. Almost like he wanted her to leave. He is a magician. He is Houdini. He is every single spy you've ever seen. When this is going on, he grabs a merch shirt that's next to him, pops it on, props up a fake dummy of himself, and then I guess slips out the passenger door. Keep in mind, there's people all around this vehicle. They would see him get out. They would hear her say, the killer's in the car, he's a bad guy. Nobody says anything. He just gets away. The cops shoot out the tires and then shoot the window and realize he's not in there. This guy's like Bugs Bunny. He just digs holes and climbs around. He's like, yeah, what's up, Doc? It's so stupid. And so we finally get the crescendo of the movie. Back at his house, back at his place. His wife, Rachel, is uh, stewing in the kitchen. She's upset. There's surveillance outside, but apparently they didn't see him slip through the cracks because, oh my God, it's Jason Bourne. He's back in the house, sitting in a chair, and he's talking to his wife. They have a long monologue, and this is where the big twist comes, where it is revealed that Rachel was kind of suspicious about him. He thought he was having an affair or something, and she found a receipt for the purchase of those tickets to the concert, so she called it in to the cops. So they had him on the suspect list, one of several that don't match any profile at all. So obviously they would spring this trap at a massive event where it would be a near impossible to find the real suspect. It's the perfect play. Before he kills her with his trusty butcher's knife, hence the name The Butcher, she does cut up a slice of pie for him. He eats it really quick. It's a little odd that she's not eating any of it, mainly because you know that she's poisoned it or did something with it, which she did. She somehow managed to put a bunch of crushed up pills inside the pie and, and fed it to him. And he didn't know until it was too late and it really didn't matter because it didn't stop him at all. He got up, he's gonna attack her, the FBI come in, and they tase him, he digs the eyes out of one, and the final tase takes him down from old lady FBI agent who's done nothing this entire movie, but she walks around acting intelligent. My buddy said that she's from the original Parent Trap, that's the young kid from Parent Trap, and so M. Knight's like, what if I got the girl from Parent Trap to be in my movie Trap? and it's trapping the parent. See what I did here? Do you understand the levels of complexity? He's not down for the count. Even though he's been roofied 10 times over and tasered a bunch of times, he gets back up, he's a big dude. They perp walk him out to the car, but before they let him in, his daughter runs over, gives him a big bear hug. He hugs her back. They have this beautiful embrace. She doesn't say the line, I release you for some reason. And for some reason, the FBI's letting him do this. Even though, again, let me remind you, he dug the eyes out of a person two seconds ago. He is a wanted murderer. They know he's the guy. He confessed to everything. But yeah, take some time to embrace your daughter who you could use as a human shield or snap the neck of or do a bunch of other horrible things. We're gonna let this play out. And then even further, he gets to go over to a bicycle, pick it up off the ground, examine it while they just stand around like, so did you catch the Raven concert? Wow, good show. Good. Man, I wish she had a new album that I could listen to on Spotify or buy on iTunes or something. What a talent. What a Are you done over there, sir? What are you doing, sir? What he was doing was ripping off one of the bike spokes, which is something you can just easily pop off without any sound at all or any force at all. It's just like... <coughs> hey, what was that? Oh, it sounded like someone coughed in a cat. 
Those two things happened pretty close together while he was down there snapping out the bike spoke. Wait, what? They put him in the back of the car. They start to drive away. He smiles as he slips out the spoke and starts to undo the handcuffs because we're gonna see Cooper again in not Trap 2, but probably Glass 2 or Split 2 or whatever crap M. Night Shyamalan dreams up to ruin my life with. Well, there you have it, my thoughts on crap. I mean, Trap, it was terrible. It made no sense, it was meandering, it went nowhere, and I don't really understand how anyone could watch this movie and say, wow, what a masterpiece, what a treat, what a great time at the movies. But let me know your thoughts and if I missed anything. I know I did miss one thing. There was the subplot with the mom who wasn't funny, who had the daughters that were shitheads. They did get their comeuppance because the girls were jealous that their old friend Riley was up on stage dancing. So that, that was the end of that storyline. Sure glad we had, to, we had to spend time with that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this. Please like the video, subscribe, share it around, tell your mom about it. I'm sure your mom would love this channel. What, what mom wouldn't? It's really, I'm really trying to get that female demographic captured at this point. It's all I have left. And if you really like what I'm doing, check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Would really like to get that thing pumped up. It's, it's really the, the bread and butter of this channel. It's how I keep the lights on. I have another channel, Adam Does Rants. It's newer, it's sexier, it's cleaner. I want to have you there as well. Subscribe to both, and hopefully I catch you next time. Take care.